Dr. Anthony Fauci is under fire again, and this time it's from both sides of the aisle. Lawmakers are accusing him of funding cruel experiments on beagles. But wait, is that true? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Dr. Anthony Fauci is facing fire from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle over cruel experiments on beagle puppies. It comes after this photo began circulating online and in media articles showing beagles with their heads trapped in mesh cages filled with sand flies. And no, those beagles were not just going as Nicolas Cage from Wicker Man for Halloween. And if you're saying to yourself, hey Chris, the story is old now. Why are you talking about it so late? Well, it's because we here at America Uncovered like to wait for more information to come out before hopping on the bandwagon. If more media did that, you wouldn't have things like the Covington Catholics mishap. And it turns out there's more to the story than you may have heard. 14 House of Representative members sent a letter to Fauci demanding answers over taxpayer-funded beagle experiments which is probably the most united Congress has been since the House voted to make animal cruelty a federal crime. And speaking of making animal cruelty a federal crime, I'm not sure how the federal government gets away with funding cruelty towards animals when animal cruelty is considered a federal crime. But I'm sure there's a logical explanation for it. In their letter to Fauci, the representatives say the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, used about 1.7 million taxpayer dollars on experiments involving over 40 beagle puppies as recently as 2019. It claims the puppies were force-fed drugs before being killed and dissected. I hope they were at least humane enough to put the drugs in a piece of cheese for them. Just like how I take my medicine. Now for you dog lovers out there, or really anyone who doesn't have a heart of stone, we know this may be hard to hear. And unfortunately, the letter says it gets even worse. The lawmakers say that during the experiments, the dogs had their vocal cords removed so they couldn't bark, howl, or cry. Animal advocates say this is to protect the nerves of the researchers who run the experiments. However, Fauci's organization says that this is to reduce noise, which is not only stressful to the animals, but can also lead to hearing loss in humans. Oh, geez, I think it's time for an America Uncovered mental health break. No, Seamus, you could have picked anything but beagles. Not better. So is Dr. Fauci responsible for cruel experiments on innocent beagle puppies? I think it's time for our segment. Wait, is that true? Dr. Anthony Fauci is such a controversial figure right now, anything with his name in the headlines seems to attract attention. Whether it's his shifting explanations about funding of gain-of-function research in Wuhan, or his shifting advice about wearing masks early in the pandemic, or his alleged shape-shifting from some QAnon stuff I read. Yeah, QAnon is basically X-Men fanfic now. Anyway, the newest controversy involving Dr. Fauci is about beagles. Cute innocent beagles. Why couldn't he have picked a less popular type of dog, like a poodle or bow wow? His popularity really plummeted after he stopped being little. But back to Dr. Anthony Fauci, the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, or NIAID. That's a department within the National Institutes of Health, the NIH. The NIAID is responsible for some of the studies that the NIH conducts or funds. If you're a Republican, taking a shot at Fauci is sure to land you a hit on national television. He's got to go. He should be fired. Uh, we should have a hearing on this and many other things. He's been found over and over and over again to lie to the American people, to lie to Congress. And I've, I'm quite frankly sick and tired of it. And this is really the last straw for a lot of people. That's right. The congresswoman who spearheaded that bipartisan letter to Fauci thinks he should be fired over this. Although, to be clear, her letter doesn't say that. Also, a politician calling someone out for lying 
is like Hannibal Lecter calling someone out for eating meat. The Twitterverse went so far as to say that Fauci should be arrested for the experiments, which led to the hashtag Arrest Fauci trending on Twitter. Although millions of people want Fauci to be arrested for anything, hashtag Arrest Fauci would trend on Twitter if they found out he ate his hot dogs plain, which, to be fair, is the second worst thing you can do to a dog that proves you're a psychopath. PETA's senior vice president has called for NIH director Francis Collins to be fired over the Beagle experiments. You had called for the resignation of Francis Collins from NIH. Are you calling now for the resignation of Dr. Anthony Fauci? Yes, I think everybody who heads an NIH agency right now should resign. Yeah, because if anyone's gonna kill animals, it's gonna be PETA. So are these allegations against Fauci and the NIAID true? More after the break. Welcome back. Dr. Anthony Fauci and his agency, NIAID, are taking heat from all sides over its supposed medical experiments on beagles, especially this one. But did the NIAID really fund the wicker pup experiment? It turns out the answer is no-ish. Context is important. It's kind of like how the expression death by chocolate is cute when it's coming from your waitress at Chili's and horrifying when it's coming from your veterinarian. This specific experiment was done in Tunisia. They wanted to see whether dogs infected with a certain tropical parasite were more attractive to biting sandflies, which also carry the parasite. So they trapped their heads in mesh filled with sandflies. And it turns out, yes, infected puppies are more attractive to sandflies. But it also turns out that that specific study was not funded by the NIAID. My guess is it was funded by Cruella de Vil. So why do people think Dr. Fauci funded it? Well, the original study published in this journal listed the NIH as one of the funders. But that was an error. The journal later issued a correction saying that that specific study did not receive any NIH funding after all. However, what complicates things is that the NIAID did fund similar studies. The NIAID confirmed it did fund a study on beagles using sandflies, also in Tunisia, but not the study with this photo. In the study they did fund, the NIAID said beagles were tested to evaluate a vaccine for the disease caused by the tropical parasite. And that study involved 12 dogs, half of which were vaccinated, that were let out in an enclosed open space during the day during high sandfly season. See? Those beagles were free range, not caged, when they were bitten by sandflies and possibly infected with parasites. So much more humane. The organization that made the allegations public is the White Coat Waste Project. It's an advocacy group that wants to end taxpayer funding for experiments on animals. It was started by Republican strategist Anthony Bellotti, but claims to be nonpartisan. The only experiments on animals I want my tax dollars to fund is how I can give my pup belly rubs from across the room. The White Coat Waste Project has published three reports this year about federal funding for experiments on beagles, and has nicknamed its exposés Beaglegate. Their claim in August about the funding for this experiment seems to be untrue, but a different report they released in July was true. That's the one where they said Fauci's agency paid over $424,000 to study a vaccine against a tropical disease in humans using beagle puppies. According to the White Coat Waste Project, researchers used biting flies to infect dozens of healthy beagles with parasites to test an experimental drug. Records show the dogs endured months of pain, and once researchers were done with them, they were killed. Not only is this cruel, but this also sounds like the origin of a zombie puppy apocalypse. The cutest of all apocalypses. The White Coat Waste Project got the info through a Freedom of Information request. It seems to have been confirmed by the University of Georgia, which conducted the study. The university told Newsweek that beagles are the standard dog model used in this type of research, and that because the disease has no cure, the animals that are part of this trial must be euthanized. That is, dog dies at the end. But don't worry, according to research, they all went to heaven. Unlike the people who did these experiments. 
So why is the U.S. funding any studies that experiment on beagles? I'll get to that after this final commercial break. Welcome back. Why does the U.S. fund experiments on beagles? Or animals at all? Well, the White Coat Waste Project, which published the Beagle story, says medical testing on animals is a waste of taxpayer dollars, it's inhumane, and it's not necessary. Here's Justin Goodman, its VP for Advocacy and Policy. The FDA says that testing on dogs is not necessary. The EPA and the VA have ended dog testing or are about to end dog testing. Is that true? Or is the White Coat Waste Project just confusing things, the way they mixed up the two Beagle studies? Let's break it down. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, does not mandate that human drugs be studied in dogs, but it doesn't support replacing all animal studies with non-animal methods. Probably because if you experiment on robots, it's going to lead to them fighting back and enslaving humanity. The least cute of all apocalypses. Animal advocates say the reason animal testing is still so widespread is because of an FDA rule from the 1930s that requires products to be tested on animals before they're tried on humans. The 1938 Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act requires that all new drugs be tested on at least two different species before they're tried on humans. They say this is to work out any of the potentially harmful effects of a drug before it's tried on a human. Fun fact, LSD was invented in 1938, which means the vet's office wasn't the only trip Fido went on that year. The argument isn't just that you can't immediately test drugs on humans. It's also that you can't just test drugs in test tubes, because humans have complex systems. Experimenting in animals lets scientists see how a drug affects a complex living body, even when that body is a lab rat. So when the NIAID did their free-range beagle study, they had no choice but to use animals if they wanted to do the experiment at all. When NIAID decided to fund this research, the agency determined that the research needed to be conducted on a dog model. And what about the EPA and VA, as Goodman mentioned? The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, still does testing on animals. But it said it planned to phase out testing on mammals by 2035. Sorry, reptiles, you're still on the menu, boys. And the Department of Veterans Affairs, or VA, hasn't planned to eliminate testing on dogs per se, but it did submit a plan to Congress to limit its experiments on dogs and other animals. Good. At least it'll be limited. So we'll be seeing less of this, and more of this. So what do you think? Should the federal government continue to test new products on animals? And if so, what about beagles? Let us know in the comments below. And please take a minute to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. If you already subscribe, Please make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. Thanks for watching America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.